Yeah, it's very popular these days and uh, I just attribute that to people's love of Disney and they'll right. see some, another aspect of Disney. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dave and we've got a big crowd here today uh, all viewing the Disney themed backyard railroad that we've built. It features all of the Disney animated classics so you can come and see Snow White all the way up through Encanto was the last one that we did and uh, we've had people coming here for about oh, the last 20 years or so. Every year we add something new. This year we're adding a a big thunder section over here that uh, will be finished probably next spring but um, a lot of times people come back year after year to see what's new and we have a lot of first timers here today as well but um, enjoy <laughs> I knew I wanted to build a garden railroad and I, for a while, uh, struggled on what would be the theme. I struggled in the right word, but just was pondering what would be best. And um, we just stumbled upon Disney because uh, the only railroad I've ever really known was uh, the Disneyland Railroad because I grew up in Garden Grove I, and we didn't ride trains for transportation, so we knew the Disneyland train. And um, that became our theme and uh, now it's grown quite a bit since then to incorporate the movies, uh, features in the park, like we have Splash Mountain here, and um, the Skyway is going over here. Different things that are not so much movies or related to trains, but they're just Disneyland related. And, uh, you know, Disneyland has a huge following, and so we're kind of piggybacking on that a bit. I built uh, pretty much any building that you see, any structure you see, uh, I built in the garage, and. Um, the trains also are all custom built. Uh, the figures are mostly collected. Some of them are play sets with the little uh, like action figures. Other ones were more creatively generated. Either it was a, uh, a ceramic sculpture that we uh, 3D scanned and then 3D printed at appropriate scale and repainted, or some of them were uh, ornaments and such. But all of the figures, I did not sculpt those. We uh, acquired them in all different ways. Actually, it was a in 2011, that was the year we decided to try and catch for every film, it became a worldwide scavenging hunt. And I had a fellow in the Netherlands that had a uh, shop on uh, um, eBay where he would collect toys and resell them. And uh, he used to go to toy conventions all across Europe. And so I would tell him, oh, I'm looking for Treasure Planet, you know, Jim Hawkins on the Solar Sailor. And he would go looking for me, you know, at the conventions. And so we had lots of them we acquired uh, that way through uh, a group effort. But um, yeah, after 2011, we had... Uh, pretty much showcased each film and now it's as each film comes out there's lots of things available for marketing uh, you know when a new film comes out the research in the old ones finding stuff from say make my music from you know the 1940s or something finding uh, figures for that it's a little more challenging but but uh, it's all here now and if somebody wants to come out and enjoy a uh, walk through uh, Disney history um, they can come on out uh, anytime in the spring or the fall we do a series of open houses this one that you're at today is one of nine that we'll do in the fall of 2022. Then we'll, we'll close down until spring of 2023 and we'll probably do another eight or nine then. I think every project, uh, when it's being built, it's my favorite. And if it's not, uh, I don't have the energy to finish building it. So I, uh, actually right now, the one that is not quite complete is uh, Prince Eric's Seaside Villa from The Little Mermaid. And it's about 90% completed right now. So it's, it's uh, partially on display, but it isn't quite completed. So I'm excited about that one because it's the current one on the table. Oh uh, yeah, it was actually in the late 90s we started planning it and started building the first structures. Uh, uh, 1999, we have some film when Sleeping Beauty's Castle was uh, originally being built. And um, so uh, a lot of those earlier buildings though have been replaced with um, better refined ones as my techniques expanded. Uh, sometimes I would rebuild buildings that you know could use a freshen up. Well, there was a series of five of them. The, the, the first uh, railroad, when it was uh, laid out, uh, I, I wanted to do just an exquisite job on the buildings to where they, they were each um, a work of art in themselves. So I, I didn't plan, a lot of guys' railroads, they have hundreds of buildings, and they're all small and uh, 
you know, uh, something that you could overlook easily. But I wanted each one of these to be a showpiece. And so there were five original ones, and they were all in different, completely different techniques. Like the Temple of Doom was one, um, or I should say the Temple of Forbidden Eye, uh, Sleeping Beauty Castle, Main Street Station, etc. cetera. Uh, we've expanded quite a bit since then, added many other structures. But uh, those original structures, uh, uh, two of them have been completely rebuilt. That's Sleeping Beauty Castle and Main Street Station. The other ones, the techniques that we chose, have, have weathered the, the time much better. And so they're still in place. Disney never helped, per se, uh, uh, in, in the building. They, there have been lots of people from Disney here. There was a film crew that came out in, um, oh gosh, what year was that? Maybe 14, maybe, or 13 or 14. And um, they were, uh, it was uh, before Disney Plus, there was the Disney Channel, and they were shooting a... A series called uh, um, Show Me Your Disney Side or something to that effect. And they were showcasing people's collections. And they sent a whole crew out here and filmed uh, lots of film, but the, it turns out the show was never carried through to production. So it never saw the light of day. But, but uh, So Disney's been out here quite a few times, and um, we've had other people from the park, um, all, you know, from operators up through executives here um, at different times. And so they're very aware of here. They don't really help in the sense of... Uh, uh, contribute but but they do come to have fun everyone has a different favorite thing and sometimes I think things that are like a, a C minus on my list is their favorite thing of, of, in the whole world of Disney so I ask them what they like and um, but we do have a, a pretty good crowd here today this is um, we adv uh, advertise through Eventbrite or I should say we manage the events because Eventbrite can cut off the number of tickets they're all free but it's still gives a ticket to the attendee so we can keep a track so we don't have a parking problem and we limit that to 250 people per day and uh, we had eight spots originally now we have nine so that was about 2,000 spots we offered and uh, I don't know if we set a record or anything but uh, they were gone within the first 12 minutes on uh, on Eventbrite and uh, it kind of, the system actually kind of crashed a lot of people said they picked up their tickets they went to check out and then the system just kept saying uh, uh, you know cannot complete transaction and so we're not sure what happened to it. Yeah, it's very popular these days, and uh, I just attribute that to people's love of Disney and uh, wanting to see, you know, see some, another aspect of Disney. From little tiny kids that are first timers to we had a woman here, uh, actually it was in the fall of 2019, right before COVID, and she um, was in Disneyland on opening day working as an employee with Walt Disney. And uh, so she was in her 90s easily at that point, and she had so many stores, completely lucid, and had so many stores. We, she just had a crowd all around her telling stories of, of the early days of Disneyland. And uh, oh yeah, it was, a, it was a great day. We had Bob Gurr here one time. He's one of the last uh, Imagineers, and uh, Bob is an amazing man. He can tell you what happened on you know, the spring of 1953 or uh, whatever and exactly what he was doing. Uh, I can't remember what I did yesterday, but Bob's an amazing man. So we have all age ranges from the little ones up to the uh, more seasoned uh, uh, Disney fans. And um, and they everyone finds something here, I think. Well, this is great, dude. Thank you so much for uh, for opening up your house and, that, and inviting all these strangers into your, your place and seeing, seeing your masterpiece. Uh, well, as we'll keep doing it as long as I've got the energy to, to, uh, to put on the events and and uh, the smiling face is what makes it all worthwhile. If you want to visit uh, uh, the website for the railroad, it's cptrr.com. It stands for Castle Peak and Thunder Railroad. That's the name of the railroad. And there's lots of pictures you can see. Uh, and um, you can register your uh, email to be notified of when the upcoming open houses are. And um, so if you like, come out and visit. Maybe we'll see you next spring. Perfect. All right, Dave. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs>